What's going on, Minties? This is Omar. I'm usually the comic book guy, but today we're going to talk about our hauls for video games because Rob is shy. He doesn't want to do this by himself, and he wants me to hold his hand the entire time. With me is my buddy Rob. Hey, guys. Rob here. How's it going? Is that you? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. I can hear you. Oh, you know what? I should put on my branded headset here. Near mint condition headset. <laughs> you should. You should. So today we're going to look at a few of the games that Rob has picked up and why. And a few of the games that I did not pick up. Um, so let's do it. <clears throat> okay. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, because I'm a Nintendo guy, I want to start off with new Super Mario Brothers. Wait, let's see. New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, tell me about that game. What is New Super Mario Brothers New U Deluxe? It's a remake of the Nintendo Wii U game. That's right, a remake of New Super Mario Brothers U, which was a remake of New Super Mario Brothers for um, the 3S. No, I thought it was on the on the Wii. It wasn't on the original Wii. Yeah, that was a remake of New Super Mario Brothers on the DS. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the third remake? Or? Well, I shouldn't say remake, because these are all new levels, all new things. This is actually it's a, remake. A, re it's a remake. I'm glad that you are like uh, bought by Nintendo, but that's that's a remake. Shut up. This is new levels. So, okay, there's New Super Mario Brothers, which was a 3D rendition of 2D gameplay on the DS. And that was very successful. And there's a New Super Mario Brothers, or New Super Mario Brothers 2, also on the 3DS. And then on the Wii, there was New Super Mario Brothers Wii, I think, in a red box. I'm sure I have it right here somewhere. And that was New Levels, and it was awesome. And then on the Wii U, there was New Super Mario Bros. U. Again, New Levels and stuff. And they also introduced the Luigi mechanics, where there's, like, Luigi stages that you only have 100 seconds to get through them. And they're really hard, and Luigi jumps differently than Mario. And then we all have, have that game. So this is a remake of the Wii U game, because not that many people play the Wii U game. <clears throat> it's a shame, because it was fantastic. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the Wii U game... Also, it also had the like twenty dollar additional Luigi Brothers expansion yes. pack. Yeah, when it first came out, it was just the game I saw. But then later on, Nintendo came out with a combination of New Super Mario Brothers and New Super Luigi Brothers U. And this is both of those games combined. If you look here, you can kind of see where is the two. Okay, right I see it. Yeah. 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 So you have not played that at all. Shush. So, um, it's sealed. <laughs> it's sealed. You can't tell. This video is choppy. I actually have a fantastic camera, so you can totally tell. The reason I haven't opened this game. Don't give me bullshit excuses. No, no, let's, no. Move, let's just move on to the next. This, game. this is legit. This is legit. All right. The reason I've opened this game is because my children, if the second I open this game, they don't want to play anything else because they are currently playing New Super Mario Brothers two and Super Mario three D Land on their 2DSs, and they're okay. doing really well with those games. Oh, yeah, it's called the P-Wing. You just fly over the stage. <laughs> Kids these days, man. Kids these days. They don't know shit. Well, no, we had warp whistles. Never mind. Well, yeah, but but I have t specifically trained them. A, I don't play the game for them, so I have not touched and done anything for them. So they've managed to get through most of the worlds all by themselves, which I'm really proud of, especially my four-year-old. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second thing is I've told them, like, you're right, there is a invincible raccoon tail that you can get where you still have to do the jumps but things bounce off of you. So if they lose a whole bunch, they get that. But there's also an item that warps you to the end of the stage and I told them, if you ever use that item, I'm taking the game away from you because that's not playing oh, the no, game. You should, tell, you should threaten them more. Like You should be like, I'm taking you back where I found you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what real parents do. Alright, moving on to my game that I actually opened to play with my daughters. Uh, this is Splatoon 2. Because I told them we're not going to get... Because they really wanted the new Super Mario Brothers game. So I gave them a choice. I'm like, you can get Calico Critters or the new Super Mario Brothers game. They chose Calico Critters, which broke my heart. <laughs> Don't give them that choice, man! <laughs> but then I said, well, let's let's play some of these other games. So we started playing Splatoon 2. So this is how far... I'm not the video game guy. I just pick up video games from time to time. Rob is the video game guy. Uh, but Splatoon 2. Uh, so I watched my oldest daughter play it. And it's okay so far. It's, it, I love the music, actually. That's what I really enjoy about this. I've actually played... I have opened and played Splatoon 2 with the children, and they really like it a whole bunch, too. I've gotten okay. pretty far in it. Yeah. Next, what do you got? 
Let's see. Um, next up, so I think last episode we talked about Kingdom Hearts, and what Square Enix decided to do was release all the old Kingdom Hearts games in like um, rapid succession for one platform because there's like Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2.5, 2.8, Do Drop Distance. There's all I, I can't even go through them all. There's so many. And ain't nobody got time for that, to try and track all those, those things down. And even me, as a video game collector, I have a lot of Kingdom Hearts. I have one and two, and Do Drop Distance, Dream Dot Distance, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't have them all. Two, 358 by two, I don't know if I have that. I might, I don't know. So what Square Enix did is they released a whole bunch of them, all of them basically, on PS4 in a compilation disc called The Story Thus Far, right? This came out in like October, November last year. 40 bucks, it was a pretty good deal to get all the other Kingdom Hearts games. And I was like, eh, I'll get it, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. So Kingdom Hearts it released last month, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and try and track down this story thus far. Sold out, and not just sold out, scalpers, who are the scourge of Earth, scalpers were having it on sale on eBay for $120. The cheapest I saw was $120. I was like, there is no chance that I'm going to freaking pay $120 for something that I may or may not play. I'm probably going to get my wife to play it. So I was super annoyed that I couldn't get the story thus far when I did pick up Kingdom Hearts, and I'm going to play it with the children as soon as we're done with Dragon Quest Seven or Eleven. Finally, Square Enix re-released the game recently. It's on Amazon. It's on their store. So my pickup for, to show you off it now is Kingdom Hearts, the story thus far. And this was $39.99, like it's supposed to be, not $120 like the dirty, nasty scalpers. So this it, contains all the games, or is it just... I'm going to have to put on my reading glasses. You don't know. What this, you've never opened this. Shut up. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 358 by Two Days, Kingdom Hearts <laughs> 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Recoded, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop, Drop Distance HD, Kingdom Hearts 0 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. I think that's a video. And Kingdom Hearts Delta Back Cover. Okay, that's also HD cinematics. So there's a bunch of stuff. So odds are you're never going to play that. It's going to stay sealed. It's, it's going to stay sealed. You're never going to play it. It's going to go down in value when you can flip it right now. You're not a flipper, which I've always appreciated about you. No, I, I do. I'm not contributing to being the dirty scourge. You used to be, because I remember you used to lure people into the trunk of your car. Not into that's the trunk true. of your car, to the trunk of your car to get Dreamcast. But this, this is true. That's true. I have made a lot of money at selling Ogre Battle back in the day. Um, why don't you do another game, because I don't have, like I said, that. Thing. Sure, sure, sure. Um, another game, since we're talking about like Japanese influence game, is Jump Force. This is. I am shocked that. I did not know that was out, and that you bought it on the Xbox One? Okay. What? Okay. Why? Okay, okay. Um, you asked the great questions, Omar. Why did me, the biggest Sony fanboy ever, buy Jump Force on Xbox One? Two reasons. One, the performance of the Xbox One X outperforms the PlayStation Pro. This runs at uh, 4K on Xbox X, and it looks... Fabulous. The frame Wait, is fabulous. Wait, are you saying fabulous. that you have an Xbox X? You know I have an Xbox X. You One didn't X. even play your Xbox One. Why would but you get I an X? The, but I need the X. Then I played a lot more now. I <laughs> see <laughs> so you put the disc in. Not that one, apparently. Not this okay. one, though. No. <laughs> okay. So, so 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 it plays better, has a better frame rate. Actually, this is the other thing. Talk, I'm not going not gonna to turn into a Microsoft fanboy, but a lot of the games that I have, like Red Dead Redemption, a whole bunch of games, play better on the Xbox One X. So... Shane, I hope you're not watching, but I buy a lot of PlayStation Pro games. I buy a lot, like Resident Evil and such, PlayStation Pro. But a lot of games I get on the Xbox One X because they play better, they have better performance, they look better. I don't yeah. know, man. I, I I think that one I would get on the on the PS4. If anything, unless I just saw that uh, Sega just announced they're going to start re-releasing their Sega Saturn controllers. Whether, if it's in USB... That, well, yeah, they do have USB ones, and then they have the classic adapter, or the classic... Yes plug in so unless i can get a sega saturn controller to play that that'd be cool but yeah i don't like the xbox controllers for fighting games that's true i did debate with the controller issue because i do like the playstation pro controller better so you're gonna get both 
No, I'm probably not yes, going to get both. No, I'm not going to get both. I'm not going to get both. I'm not going to get both. And also, the limited edition, or the this is the ultimate edition. The ultimate edition it was easier to pick up on Xbox. So, like, you know, boom. Oh, you're, po- you're poor. You couldn't get the ultimate edition on PS4. Well, That's well, what it comes down to. Well, there is. So, yeah, I am poor because this one is the deluxe edition or whatever. How much was that? Um, with Gamers Club Unlocked, I think it was 60 bucks. Because it's it's more expensive, but there is one that comes with like a statue, like a yeah, statue of like I saw it, that it's either Go- Goku or Naruto or somebody. One of these three, maybe Luffy. One of the, it comes with a statue of one of these guys, and it's like oh my gosh, I need it. But it was like two hundred fifty dollars, and there's just oh you bought chance. you bought more expensive, stupider shit than that. So I, don't I have, hear. and that's why I didn't feel the need to buy this. <laughs> Good morning, Kyler Stern. Thank you for joining us this early morning this is how rob likes to do his hauls early early monday morning early monday morning what better way to kick off the week than to talk about video games right <laughs> yeah uh so i got this game right here I, you can see it's not open this is called the labyrinth of refrain i don't know names like that cover like that and i look at the back it's got all this little cute anime rpg elements to it uh sold uh, what is that sold. game i don't even know what that is <laughs> I don't know. It's called Labyrinth of Refrain. <laughs> Discovered the truth behind the Labyrinth of Refrain. What's up, Nick Schmidt? Thank you for joining us. Thank you to everybody out there watching right now. Rob's mom. Hey, Joe mom. Cool. What's up, Joe Cool? Hey, what's up, Gio? Gio's here. Gio might know what the hell this is. Gio, I pick up games based on covers and names, and I look at the back, and I'm like, oh, cute little anime girls. Yeah, sold. I don't even know what the hell this is. And I'm like Rob, though. Unlike Rob, I'll open it up and try it out. <laughs> um, so my friend speaking of rp there's there's one game i do want to talk about really quick that you picked up that i want to know why okay All pull right. it out it's on the D, it's on the 3ds and i haven't i i play this series but i will say i'm surprised you picked it up go ahead and show everybody and all right so so omar gave me a bunch of grief for this speaking of anime games and things that don't make any sense by atlas or nis this is etrian odyssey nexus right now you these being are, the biggest are, Etrian are, Odyssey fanboy, what is what number is that? What part is number that? Is this? You're a fucking idiot. You have no, never played those. It's part six. It's part six. Etrian, <laughs> this is the sixth one, I think. Because I, <laughs> I think I bought Etrian Odyssey 5, and I think I bought this afterwards. <laughs> I'm not convinced covers and names is a solid basis for buying decisions. No, sir, it's not. This is why I ended up buying things like Mega Man 2, which had a shitty cover, but a great game. Great game. Uh, and unfortunately, stupid games like i don't know wizards and warriors Death, had fabio, no, no, no. fabio deadly on the cover deadly towers, deadly towers. great a cover great cover not a good game <laughs> yes we're from the nintendo era so we suck uh so all right, it, was, it, was, it was it was on, it was on sale so okay this so the is reason a, i gave dungeon rob crawler, dungeon crawler it's and a dungeon uh, crawler very uh, like shadow gate you don't get to see your character so the reason i gave rob a bunch of shit is because I know for a fact he didn't play the first game. Because if You're he had correct. played the first game, he would not have bought any more. Because the first <laughs> game is probably one of the hardest fucking RPGs I've ever played. It will make your asshole bleed. Like, you will regret <laughs> buying that game. And you were like, I'm never buying anymore. Now, I beat it because I'm like, I'm one of those guys who's like, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep playing the stupid-ass game. And I played it for hours and hours. And I think I remember texting my wife going, it's finally over. I did it. I can come back, I can come back home now. <laughs> So I sit on the couch and just go, motherfucker, But anyway, it is a frustrating game. The second one wasn't so hard. The third one made it difficult again, but not as nothing is as hard as the first Etrian Odyssey. So if you beat Etrian Odyssey 1 on the DS, I think it was on the original DS. Oh, no, 3DS. Uh, I think it was on the DS. DS. Rob will never open that game and will never have to be frustrated, so he's fine. He just owns it. So why did I buy this? This is a good question. You're absolutely right, because you're right. I have not played Etrian Odyssey. I haven't played any of them. I own Etrian Odyssey 4. Five, which I do plan on playing, and I pick this up because the 3DS cycle is winding down. There's there Nintendo says, "Oh, we're going to support the 3DS," and you look at the release calendar for 2019, and they are not going to support the 3DS. It's just not going to happen. So since this is one of the last 3DS games to release, I want to have a piece of uh, of the gaming history. It comes with a bunch of cool items in it. I like a, there's a 32 page art book. There's a pen of a character I don't recognize at all. So I was like, you know, sure, I'll pick this up. And it was on sale. And it was I'm, on sale. How much was it? 
this was I think normally retails for thirty nine bucks. It was on sale for like twenty nine. Because game dollars sold. Yes, Gamer, I'll, exactly. Gamers I'll Club buy. unlocked. I'm gonna get I'll, it. <laughs> yeah, no, mine's almost up. Like at the end of this year, which sucks because you know it doesn't exist anymore. Right. Yep. Um. Uh. So really quick, some shout outs. Paul, thank you for joining us. Thank you for saying that you like this segment. And yeah, we're doing this every month now. Uh, Matthew is the one that said the thing about the, the covers, and Andrew transforming into Jess with your anime women. Yes. Yes. It's just called getting older. <laughs> Yes. All right. So I gave you a bunch of grief about that because I always do. All right. What's the next game you got, buddy? All right. All right. All right. So you talked a little bit about controllers. Uh, Retrobit has released a, um, as you said, a Genesis controller, like an original, like plug into your old school Genesis and a USB controller for the Saturn. And I haven't had a chance to pick those up because they sold out instantly. I'm hoping they come back in because if you know me, one of my favorite controllers of all time is the Saturn controller. It's absolutely it's gorgeous. This is the controller. correct answer. I mean, yeah. is there any other answer? Is right? there any other answer? No. I know, I know. like, uh, I think the generation after us loves the PlayStation controller. That's because they're but, wrong and they don't know any better. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. Sega Saturn, best fighting game controllers. Over the Neo Geo controller. I love that thing. If, oh, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that plays with fighting sticks, so yeah. Yeah, I'm a controller guy too as well. So the, I believe the Saturn controller. I'll win yeah, those you, know what the, what, you know what the uh, fighting stick guys call us? What? Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> they're just mad because i can do hadokens and show you because a lot oh, so much easier man instead of like anyway go ahead so anyway so i did pick up last uh recently these are the nintendo um this is for the switch they're classic what? nintendo controllers really yes yeah, so these actually slide on the side wow hmm. that is awesome who makes this nintendo so if you buy the nintendo online service which is 20 bucks a year and you can you how, 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 and how many people can be on that? There's like a family, family a family pack can get you. I yeah, why eight, haven't we done the family pack, Rob? You, should, me, and like ten other people would pay like three people dollars a year. Know. Yeah, we surely should do that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you get a family ahead. pack that's thirty four dollars a year. It's actually a pretty good deal. And when you do that for the Switch, you get a bunch of Nintendo <laughs> games. Eventually, you'll get Super Nintendo games and things like that. But you are once you do that, you are eligible to buy this. And these are just NES controls. These were sixty bucks. Shipped directly from Nintendo. They charge, and they are authentic. They are perfect. It doesn't look like I opened them, but I totally opened them. They feel the same. They slide under. I, I believe you have opened them, because I know you open your controllers. You're kind of you Real men play fighting games with Guitar Hero controllers. Damn, I thought you were going to go with the DDR pad. Uh, or the <laughs> Konami pad. Remember trying to do that when we were young with the oh, Konami yeah. pad? I had a DDR pad right back behind me. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was back in the day get, when you and Melanie, and you and Melanie and Fran would play... No, actually, I think it was Melanie and Fran would play DDR... So I had DDR Konomics or whatever, and we would play that game. Oh, and we yeah. had to like, we had to get like real DDR pass because the crappy ones that came in the game sucked, and they were sliding all over the place. Do you remember that we had to invest in those giant hardcore DDR pads? Yeah, I remember. My wife still has some, actually. Yeah, yeah I think. I, oh, I think I have it right here. Ugh. You can't lift that. You're weak. You're weak. Oh, no, it's huge. Hold on. That's this, what she said. This, this has, this so while weird. you're lifting that giant thing for no reason, I'm going to show my next game, and that is Shadow of War, uh, the definitive edition of Middle Earth. I had no idea this was a Lord of the Rings game. It's is this a sequel to Shadow of Mordor? Are oh you God. serious? You yes, didn't know the loader game? You're an idiot. I am. I just found it for five bucks. So I got it. yeah. So the what you have there is a sequel. Five bucks. You, that's a sequel to Shadow of Mordor. And not only is it the sequel, it's the definitive edition with all the DLC and stuff. That game is fantastic. Good pickup. Great pickup. And you, you know, haven't played this. You no, played bro, this. incorrect. I actually have played it because I don't usually play that many Western RPGs. No, but I did don't. play Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War, or I like to call it Shadow of More. What makes this the definitive edition? Uh, extra DLC and all the bugs and patches and stuff. Uh, Matthew, there was a NES pad. It was the Konami pad, like for track and field. There and one of the hardest. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Melanie still has. Melanie was playing with that the other day. She she, really? pulled, she pulled it out. Yeah, she was jumping around up there. That, yeah, if you ever want to play DDR, get these big red octane things. I'll sell you mine for three hundred dollars. No, he will not. All right, what else you got? Okay, uh, I got distracted with controllers. <laughs> so speaking of other controllers, so what I was trying to talk about was this thing. This is the eight bit dough. Eight bit dough. Is that how you say that? Really don't know. Yeah, they're the ones that do the wireless stuff for the um, the classics, right? Like yes. the Nintendo classics. For the classics and actually classics. for the 
and actually for the original systems too. So this is the Genesis one because analog, for people who made the analog mini NT, the NES one and the super NT, they are releasing their Genesis variant this month. And I am super jazzed about that, right? Wait, what is it? It's called the Analog Mega SG. So you remember me talking about the... The shitty at games? Uh... No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't mention that word again. So we remember me talking about the Analog Super NT. It plays Super Nintendo games using an FPGA. What's up, cruising through space? Cruising, baby. Cruising. He's been with us up. for a long time. Shout out to you, man. He's been, he's been one of our viewers for many, many times. Months, Thank you very much. Years. Let's, years. Years. <laughs> We've been doing this for a while. So Analog is releasing a Mega SG, which is the same FPGA technology in a very similar fo format as this for 190 bucks. So this way, and it has HDMI, so now you can play your Genesis games with real cartridges. And what's cool about the Mega SG is it'll allow you to play, like, not Sega CD games, but 32X games and Master System games and Game 2 games via adapters. Like, it's actually a really cool thing. So that comes out later on this month. So and you're preparing it, yourself. I'm preparing by myself. Before they sell out, because the Nintendo one sold out for the for the longest time, the Super Nintendo wireless controllers. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it plugs in to, I have a real uh, Genesis SG, SDG, SDX here. I don't so, even know the shit that you're holding up. Like, you are... You're you are the gamer because I mean <laughs> that that's one thing I give you I give you a lot of shit but you're man mad props to you for you go out of your way you spend weeks trying to make the perfect system just to play on your HD TV. Uh, Paul says that he loves the Sega Saturn controller but he thinks the Nintendo sixty four controller is my favorite one. That's the first one with Rumble features. I mean and that's a that was a good controller. I liked it. That was the first controller that had an analog stick. Yep. And and even though it wasn't the best analog stick, it did work, and it was required. Mario 64 dictated that hardware that generation. So we have Mario to thank for an analog control today. <clears throat> so, Or the GameCube it, Wavebird is what he said, which is another awesome one, especially if you love Smash Brothers. And that was the first controller that had wireless. Well, not crappy wireless, not like um, infrared wireless. But that like, was like know. Nintendo had wireless controllers back in the day, but they were really shitty. Yeah, terrible. So what this little thing is, this little dongle right here, this plugs into your actual Sega Genesis like that. And then you have a wireless Genesis controller. And you might remember games like Golden Axe 2, which we've talked about on the show before. Some other games were incompatible with the six-button controller. Even So this has a mode where you hold this. Here's, a, here's your PSA announcement. Hold this minus button, and uh -huh. it will put it in an actual three button control pad mode unlike what the six button original pad was supposed to do and then you can actually play those games correctly oh so, that's right yeah because the button layout was so fucked up on the yep, six yep. button yeah on oh Golden that's Action, great yeah, how you much is that controller like, why am i good. asking i don't want it i know i don't need this Gee, don't, don't answer 24 that. bucks 24 bucks yeah but how much is the system oh the analog nt system is 190 oh is that it is that all and if, i mean you say is that all it's 200 dollars is not playing <laughs> around that but but it does play your games upscaled high res in HDMI perfectly. It's not emulation like these emulators like the the at games piece of junk. It actually plays the games really well. We can have a discussion about FPGA versus emulation in a four panel episode or six panel episode we of your edition. We, we really should because I'm curious about that stuff. Yeah, Usually we'll most of it. Um, Kyler Stern is saying we need a video game collection tour for the channel. We do, Rob. You do. You we Rob do. Has a lot. Well, Rob is living in a museum. You know how, like, like seriously, I'm the comic book guy, so I have a lot of this. And I have a lot of video games, but Rob's video game collection is amazing. Like, it goes, it goes, I mean, I sold my, all my cartridge games are gone, right, from my house. They're gone. And it hurts, because I just recently watched Nintendo Quest, the documentary, and it makes yes. me want to kind of do something <laughs> like that, just because I'm an idiot. And I love road trips. So anyway, um, but I sold them, and I think I have everything from PSX up. Like, I kept. And I don't buy everything anymore. Like, I used to. Like, all limited editions. Hey, Delusional Arcade. Man, I love that guy's channel, too. You should, you all should check it out in the chat right now. But anyway, we should do... You should do a tour, man. Whenever well, you get your basement ready or whatever it is you're waiting well, on. Well, that's the thing. I, you're absolutely right. I have a... I don't know if my collection is the equivalent of your comic collection. Because your comic collection... I give you a lot of grief. Your comic collection is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I know. That's what all the ladies say. Oh yeah, they're all, they line yeah, up out the door. Panties like, drop as soon as they get down here. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a, I do have a lot of video games, and I want to show them off. But 
they are all over the place. I need like shelving and things like that, but I don't have any place to put the shelvings where they look nice. If you ever watch Digital Foundry, one of the guys, John Linneman, he, the way he has set his, everything set up, it looks fantastic. And I want to try and duplicate that with the games. Like my systems, I do have my systems on shelves, easy to access, and it looks really nice. The systems, I'm good. The games just are not there. So I will do a gaming thing. It's 2019. I don't have any more babies in the pipeline <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> so maybe they'll be able to like spend the money, finish the basement, get shelving, and actually put the games where you can see them because they do look really nice when I when I when I, and I, I don't want to show you because I, I think I'm trying to do what you're trying to do. Have a cool collection of stuff where you can be like, hey, do you remember Fatal Frame Two on the PlayStation Two? Iron yeah, Butterfly. Dude, that game is great. <laughs> That's right. This game is scary AF. Crimson Maybe Butterfly, should... not Iron Butterfly. <laughs> Crimson Butterfly, that's exactly what it Love is. Love that we... game. Yeah, the game's fantastic. Uh, but I want to be able to like, hey, do you have such and such? Can we play it? Yes. Boom, here you go. That, that's the goal. I got one more game to show off before we... Oh, wait. Before... Oh. Wait, let me let me go next because I okay. don't have... Anyway. Sure. I, I don't collect as many video games anymore, right? I don't do that. Yeah. But there is one thing I'm a weak-ass bitch for, and that's... These little motherfuckers. Don't say you're dolls. <laughs> Shut up! They're not dolls. These are collectors' items, and unlike Rob, I actually showcase these. I have them all in my shelf, and I open them up. I don't think you've opened some up too. Maybe I've opened up maybe five. I yes. love Amiibo. Rob and I have told stories on this channel before about standing in line with a bunch of dorks. Mm-hmm. Wait, we were the dorks. We were the people dorks. Driving, uh, people driving by and being like, hey, what are you guys in line for? And you and I screaming Madden because we were not <laughs> going to admit that we were waiting in line for fucking Greninja. That's or exactly we what we did. That's happened twice. One time we said Madden. Another time we said Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to tell those motherfuckers in the Mustang I'm waiting in line for no damn a Greninja. So <laughs> before anybody else in the line could answer, we yell out. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> I, I love these things, man. I um, Ever since the Nintendo 64 game, when you started collecting little trophies, I remember saying to myself, I'm like, man, if Nintendo ever releases these little trophies, I'll buy every one of them. Now, I bought all the Smash Brothers. I haven't gotten into the Splatoon ones or the Animal Crossing because Rob knows I'm weak. And if I buy one like Tom Nook, it's game over. I'll buy all the Animal Crossings. Or if I yep. buy uh, Squid Girl and Squid Boy, I'll buy all the variants. And No, no, don't need that in my life. Uh, so just sticking to the Smash Brothers, um, I did miss out on the Daisy pre-order for the Smash Daisy, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that day of that I'll be able to get her. But I did get in on Ken and uh, Link, and I think they haven't announced the other ones yet, right? Like Pichu yeah. and all those yet, for American yeah. release at least. In, in Japan, you can go to Amazon Japan and still get them that way if you don't want to wait in line. Forgive me yeah, if and I'm Daisy, you know, I'm I'm on the ball. If I see Daisy, I'll send you a link. Yeah, yeah Rob always problem. does. So it's it's a good it's a good relationship we have here. All right, man. Sorry. Uh I just wanted to talk about my dolls. <laughs> this is before the tears. <laughs> Kyler. Anyway, go ahead, man. Dude. Okay. Last one, last game I want to talk about and um um if you maybe seen some of the ads, this is Crackdown 3 for the Xbox 1. This is I, remember, uh, you, I remember during our holiday episode, you and Shane said it looked no good. Uh, did we say it looked no good? It looks like, I think the term that we used was, it. if you like Crackdown 1 and you like Crackdown 2, you'll probably like Crackdown 3. I think so did this. you buy two copies? Cause, <laughs> no, what, no, or, it came with a metal box, but the okay. metal box is not in the game. No, I didn't buy two copies. So uh, this, if you've ever seen the ads, they're hilarious. It has Terry Crews, and he's doing like Crackdown esque stuff, jumping around in a very cartoon world. Um, it's an open world. You're a police officer kind of type person. Guns jumping. It's a lot of fun. So I had a lot of fun. Our buddy Travis, friend of the show, he loves these games, both Crackdowns, and so I want to give this one a shot. And uh, it looks really pretty, really pretty. So um, it's a comparable Crackdown game. I, I think my review stands as is: if you like Crackdown one. And you like Crackdown 2, you'll probably like Crackdown 3. This is the stupidest re- Why did you review games for a magazine? I, I, if you like Madden 97 and 98, you may <laughs> like Madden 99. You'll probably like Madden 99. <laughs> <laughs> so Dilution Arcade has something that I wish I had. And what that's, is that? Uh, self-control. Uh, he said he has bought one or two Amiibos as decorations. He doesn't even have a Wii U. And he's kept them in the boxes. One or two of key characters, right? Okay. And... In in a in a perfect world or in an alternate reality where Omar 
Omar has self control. I would be like that too. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna get Mario. Oh, and if they ever have a Bomberman or a, one of the Final Fantasy characters, I'll get it. But it's no, it's like, oh, I gotta get all the Smash Brothers in the Player Two versions too. Let me tell you something. I would go as far as if they do a limited edition, like if Disney and Nintendo go in and on a deal, and you gotta go to Disney World to get limited edition uh, Koopa Kids, like each one of the Koopa Kids. <laughs> You know what? I'd I, I road trip with you. I'd be right there. <laughs> I'd be riding every goddamn ride everywhere. Like if it's Tokyo exclusive, Europe exclusive, and Disneyland exclusive. Oh, we're fucked, Rob. Like it's game over. It's like, oh man, I you know I gotta get Wendy Okupa. She's only available in Germany at Target. <laughs> Germany. Well, no, but I mean that's what things like eBay are for and money, I guess. Money, money. And yeah. I'm with you. Like you know, Delusion Arcade is correct. If I could just get like Mario and Link and Peach and Zelda, that would be cool. But there's no, there's my brain doesn't understand. Just get one amiibo. No, I have to get them all. Now, like you said, I do have every amiibo. Do you have all the ones like the Animal Crossing and the? I uh, think the only one that I do not have all of them. I have all the Mario ones, all the Zelda ones, all the Splatoon ones. I think the only ones I don't have are all the Animal Crossing ones, and. And I have a few of the Animal Crossing ones. Like, I think I have Rossetti, Tom Nook, KK yeah, yeah. Slider. Yeah, some of those guys. Like, like where you I did like, it. Mario in his wedding gown. And, yes. And... Yeah, he's right there. Mario in his wedding gown right there. Metroids in his squishy top and Samus looking all cool. Like, yeah, I see, like, Geo's the same way. He only owns Samus and Link Amiibo. I, I, and Dilution Arcade said he's picky. If the Amiibo looks whack, he won't buy it. They all uh, whereas Rob people. and I own, like, first printing of Marth with one eye down here and the other one up here. We're like, oh, he looks great! He looks great! Ship him! Fire and, Emblem toy! And I, you, or you're better than me, because at least you take him out of the box. I don't want to take him out of the box, so I think they look really cool in the oh, box. yeah, speaking of which, I need to get these out. No, wait! Do it! <laughs> Gosh! Uh, but yeah, I, I do. I display them, because I don't have any room for boxes, obviously. I don't have room for hardly anything in the, in the basement. Yeah, I did. And, at one point, I had all the Amiibo laid out on... Um, we have a futon in our guest bed. I've laid all the amiibo out on the futon to see how I could display them. And as close as I could put them together, they couldn't fit on the futon. So I was like, well, crap. I need to I need to come up with an amiibo solution. And it might be, and I hope it doesn't come down to this, it might be I have to open them and put them away. But that, that, that would be sacrilegious to me. Amiibos got you off cheap. I discovered Asian import and Figma and PVC figures. Yeah, me too, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> me too, brother. I've got a whole shelf. Let me see. I don't know if I how good the camera is. Oh, those are my transformers. But back there, there's a whole another section of this room is where my toys, or I'm sorry, collectibles are. Dolls. My figmas and things like that are back there. And oh my god, yeah, I feel you. They're expensive. That's why I kind of slow down like my video game and my uh, my uh, toy, my uh, collection or uh, action figures and. Um, PVCs and statues and things like that. God, man. Oh, dude, like, there's a Berserk statue that Geo fucking pointed me out to, and I'm like, it's a thousand dollars, and he's like, they take payments, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good <laughs> <laughs> It's a thousand dollars. Like, I don't want to pay a thousand dollars, but it's fucking guts, and he's got his giant sword, and I'm like, oh, man, that's so badass. Like, I would, I would sleep with him. Not physically, but, you know, I would put him in my bed, and Melanie would be like, what are you doing? I'm like, Guts came in. He's got to be with me for a week before I can let him downstairs. This is a $1,000 statue. He's going to be safe in the bed. And I'm, <laughs> I'm with you right there because I have enough collecting vices that I don't need anything else. This is why I don't have any, like, pops. There's lots of really, like, you have some amazing, amazing statues that I love to have. Like, you have a Kami. You have some of the yeah. um, Dragon Crown, Dragon's Crown statues. You have some great statues. There's some beautiful, like, uh Figma, Link, and Zelda. Oh my gosh, there's an amazing Zelda that just came out very recently. Or it's yeah, coming I saw out. that. Like, oh my gosh, like I would love to have these figures, but they're three and four hundred dollars. Like, I have enough vices with between like <laughs> collecting bourbon and amiibo and video games. Like, I don't need anything else. Well, see, that's my problem too. Or I guess you know that was one of my things. It's like which which hobby do I slow down? And unfortunately, it had to be video games because video games have always uh, taken more time from you know. RPGs and things like that. The, the kind of video games that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, now, I still get them from time to time, and like I said, I still get little Amiibo figures, but it's just um, that and my, yeah, my collectibles are slowed down. So Yeah, and my, my bourbon collecting has 
slow it down. I have three children. I don't even have time to drink anything anyway as is. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Delusion RK said he, he can have expensive statue with kids, or he can't. Cannot have. So, I have kids, and they are wonderful. Like, they come down here, and they're like, these are <laughs> You call them my collectibles. They don't even call it my toy room. They're they're great. Now my psycho dog that I just got, actually he's pretty good so far. Strider's really good. He's he sits down here. We've done shows together, and he's he's cool. He lays down here. But man, if he gets in one of those moods, and I'm over here not paying attention, he's like, oh 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 oh, this transformer was five hundred dollars. I'll take care of that. Chew <laughs> <laughs> him the hell. Up. <laughs> oh, you know, talking about speaking of transformers, I think I did. Talk about how I did pick up those Generation One. Yeah, the G One stuff. They G1 got stuff. we got more coming out, man. Soundwave oh, with cassettes. And yeah, like, we were talking about collectibles too. Like, oh my gosh! Like again, stop? I'm only trying to get the ones that I had as a kid. But I had Laser Beacon Frenzy, so I had to get that. I don't. I think my brother had Soundwave, but if he had Soundwave, I got to get Soundwave too. I yeah. wasn't going to stop. So for my children, because I had them watch, they were giving Transformers a bunch of grief. I had them watch Gen One. Transformers, like you were making fun of me. And I bought them Cyberverse, Optimus Prime, and Cyberverse Bumblebee. And they've been having a lot of fun playing with those. So I've been buying a few more Transformers. Dan would be proud. Oh, I'm proud of you. Um, Matthew says, have you considered getting into Warhammer 4? No, hell no. The amount of space you need for that alone. Like, I've seen, like, I'm jealous of those guys that are talented that can paint those kind of things, the modeling, right? It's super expensive, too. And then you also need room. Like, uh, one of them one of my a mutual friend of ours had a he had a basement full of that stuff and it was amazing but it was just like i don't even is it a game it's a game right you play it it's, like, a, it's a tabletop game and you talk one of my one of my coworkers he is talking about getting into warhammer yeah but it literally so we talk about oh our gaming habits are expensive dolls are expensive comics are expensive top and we, no to get him going with a cool table and like figures and stuff Ten thousand dollars, and that's like shut off. That's being conservative to get everything that he needed. So, like, there is zero chance that I'm going to get. Like, I would love to get into Warhammer Hardcore because, like you just said, those figures and the game itself is actually a lot of fun. And like, it would be cool to have something like that—a room dedicated to Warhammer. But ten thousand dollars—that's a good down payment on a Tesla. (laughs) Uh, Paul, I'm with you, buddy. That's that's what I slowed down. I started picking up my other hobby of comic books again. Do you all do tabletop games? Um, you know, we did an episode a few months last year sometime where it was genres we couldn't get into. Taboo. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and I mentioned I could never get into Dungeons and Dragons. Now we're going to do an episode where, like an update episode of how that's going. Because I said I would try it at least three times. Tina and Maddie have gotten me to play my other co-host. Um, I think Rob's was like Star Trek. Yeah, so we all we all have homework, yeah. mm-hmm. and we all are going to do an update of whether you know we got into it or what we think of the genre now. But yeah, so tabletop games is one of those things I never got into. Like I've done um, things like House on Haunted Hill or in a, a, a pandemic and things like that. Like new kind of games that you play with my my family and friends. Those like are fun. Werewolf and vampire yeah. things like that. I've never heard of Omnibus collections two weeks ago collected comics in the 90s yeah until near mint popped up in my youtube feed now i'm doomed you are doomed brother welcome <laughs> to the club dude you your omnibuses that's something else that i see those and i'm like man how can i get all the comics in one shot like how can i get all of black panther's story in one shot how can oh, i get all the avengers and, in one shot well and then that's a rabbit hole right because then you're like uh like okay so there are still books i'm missing right from my collection that i would love to have and then there are books that i'm like they haven't made so then you get into the hobby of i'm going to do it myself you do start you start doing custom binding and then that's another rabbit hole it's like uh like i've got all my superman post crisis on infinite earths custom bound or or my teen titans because i'm tired of waiting on dc and that's you know that's another expense that i could wait on patiently maybe because you know these i've been in the omnibus game since day one and it's been over 13 years since these things have been out and they still don't have a Peter David Hulk omnibus. And, and I'm like, oh, I could make my own, but I'm waiting. So we'll see. Mm, yep. Bad rabbit hole. <laughs> I tripled my omnibus collection since watching this channel. <laughs> I'm so sorry, so he went from one to three? <laughs> <laughs> Unless he had 10. And then he went the, from 10 and, to you 30. Know, 
talking about again, talking about expensive collectibles. Yeah, Jim Mint's got a huge channel. He's got a huge following too. Yeah. Talking about collectibles, you've we've talked about the arcade one up cabinets that are like three hundred dollars. Yeah. So how many right? you got? How many of those you got? So I have two, and now I'm faced with a dilemma. There is a Final Fight Strider nineteen forty four. Uh, uh, what's the fourth game? Ghouls and Ghosts. Ooh. Uh, one coming out. It's like, oh my gosh, I have. Uh, to go, they went with Ghouls and Ghosts instead of Ghosts and Goblins. I think it's Ghouls and Ghosts rather than Ghosts and Goblins. Wow. Internet double That's check a me. Hard arcade game. Yeah, it is. It's it's doable. Don't be don't be a weak sauce. You can handle it, man. Up. Yeah, because I have unlimited continues. <laughs> true, true. Forty five, Omar. So anyway, so I'm like, ooh, I definitely want to get this. But as you've seen my playroom, there's not really room for another one of these things. And then my buddy hits me up, and he goes, Rob, I know you're into these arcade one up cabinets. Walmart has an exclusive. Oh shit. Yep, yep. yep. See, there are two words. I already said it. Walmart <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> Walmart has an exclusive Space Invaders one to commemorate the 40th anniversary. Look, look, anniversary exclusive Walmart. To commemorate the 40th anniversary. If it anniversary. came in a metal arcade cabinet, you would. <laughs> it was in a metal box. Actually, I know how you are. It's not in a metal box, but it does have orange crown molding. So it's a, it looks different than the others. And I'm like, oh my God. I don't even like, I mean, I respect Space Invaders. For what it is, because it's one of the first games that we're, I'm into the hobby that I'm in, and it is a fun game. This that let's let's not belittle what Space Invaders is. It's a huge thing. It got people. It got the reason there's Pac Man is because of Space Invaders, right? Right, right. I, but I, I know. It's not. I don't have the like. You know, it's not in my chest how much I love Space Invaders. But a limited run Walmart exclusive. 40th anniversary with like orange crown molding. I really want one, but there's I can't justify three hundred dollars, and I don't even know where I put it. Like, because put it on put, top of the other one. Put it on top of the other. So it's like a big giant DS. And then again, if I get that, do I still get the other Strider? You have goddamn uh, right, you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like I have to get the Strider. You know, you don't ask me for like <laughs> advice when it comes to these things. I'm gonna so, be the so, one that tells you. Yes, you do need it. I don't care yeah. where you put it. So. I'm almost like, okay, maybe I should get the limited one before it disappears just so I have it put in a box somewhere and then wait on the Final Fight Capcom Strider thing. But then, like, again, that's $300. That's a lot of diapers. Don't measure <laughs> it like that. Don't measure it like that. I have to have 85 children. <laughs> and, and, again, where would I put it if we could finish the basement? Look, that's you got cool. space behind you right now. Yeah, it's true. There's a white wall. You, you could put your laptop on it and do shows from your arcade cabinet. The three hundred dollars that would cost for that thing could go into the basement. That could be drywall, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I've yeah. all, you know, it, uh, so there's only two arcade cabinets that I would ever own. One, the Mame that I would customize myself, right? Mm -hmm. With just a Mame cabinet with everything that I want. But if I were to own one original cabinet, you already have yours. You have Miss Pac Man uh, table, uh, the sit down cocktail. one, mm -hmm. the cocktail one. Thank you. Uh, which, remember, I showed you a picture when I was uh, working in Cleveland, and they had it at a restaurant using it as a table. What are you? My kids use it as a table. Like, get stuff off this thing. It's not but, a uh, table. But, Daddy, it's a table. But what I was going to say is uh, the actual arcade cabinet that I would buy would be Rastan. Because that's my all-time favorite arcade game. I love that game. That was a hard-as-balls game. But the music is outstanding and just, oh, man. Okay. So we just need to go over to Delusional Arcade's home and shoot an episode in his arcade because that's what he does. He he builds and restores arcade cabinets, and he's got his check. You should check out his channel. I know I've told you before. We should do a combined episode. Let's go over his house. Okay. Well, we should talk because I've been jumping into the world of arcade, like arcade restoration and things like that. And uh, we'll talk about this more later. But I came across a Donkey Kong on the cheap, and I've been. It, I've been working with it, and I have been Googling and watching YouTube things of all the most random things. So Delusional Arcade, you can probably help me figure <laughs> out some of these things. Like I saw one video, it was like, how to wash your CRT. Like, am I really supposed to wash this? How not to die by discharging the 20,000 volts in it. Oh, like, there's a lot of people that do that shit on the internet. <laughs> Wrap it around aluminum foil, and you put it in the microwave for 10 minutes. That's how you wash your CRT. <laughs> That's how you wash your CRT. And clean your joystick. Like, you know, I've been having a lot of fun messing with these things and, like, things I don't understand. So Delusional Arcade, I'll hit you up. Mr. Butterbridges, welcome to Berserk. He just got his first... Uh, Berserk volume, so awesome. It's kind of hard to get them on a teen living with your parents. Nothing wrong with that, man. You read them online until you know you get out and make your own money or 
save your money. I remember as a kid, I would save my money and like my first couple jobs when I was in high school, I'd buy comics with that. And then eventually, I sold most of my comics and traded up to collected editions. So yeah, man, don't enjoy being a team living with hell your yes, because that money that you're saving by not paying like rent, <laughs> car <laughs> payment, that's stuff that you can use to buy like statues and stuff. And even <laughs> then, once you get your job and get out of the house and you don't have anything else to be responsible for but for yourself, then you can buy all that junk. So enjoy, chill. It's cool. It's all good. Oh yeah, man. Enjoy that time. Let your mom wash your clothes. You know. Shoot. Shit. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Enjoy it. Uh, Delusional Arcade is in the East Coast. That's right. That's right. He's in one of the cool. Uh, he's on the cool coast. Yeah, uh, he's so that uh, is that it, Rob? Is that yeah, it for today? It. They wraps, they wraps okay. it up for me. All right, that's it for me too. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. But why would you be watching if you haven't I'll subscribe? Um, and this is big. This is a big week for us. So my haul, my comic haul, will be coming out on Wednesday. I'm still waiting on some packages. I don't know. So I may just do a small haul. Uh, my comprehensive reading order of Incredible Hulk will be done. Uh, that will come out on Friday. And we have Old Reader, New Reader uh, tomorrow. We're talking about Greg Rucka's Wonder Woman. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That is also a live show. But the big news this week is that our panel show is back. So Woo! our Season 3 panel show kicks off on Thursday at 11 o'clock, I think. It's not a live show, so you can watch it anytime. But it's where the four of us, most of the time it's four of us. This time it's the six of us talk about our favorite return. So we are very excited that we are finally back doing our panel show every week. So watch us every Thursday. Please, uh, do, please do. Please like, subscribe, share. And that's it. So remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. Take care, guys. <laughs>